Hello, and welcome back to our study of the people of the Old Testament. I'm excited to have you come. It's really been uh, good for me to learn and remember the stories that we've been talking about in the past. Why is it good for us to look back into the stories of the past? Because God has placed truths in those stories that are good for us today. We think, oh, I don't need the past. You don't, you don't learn anything from there. Really, uh, the past is a wonderful teacher if we are paying attention. And God has given us in the Bible many, many wonderful stories from different people in different situations to help us to learn the truths that He wants us to know. We've talked about, in, in the weeks past, we've talked about different people. Uh, we, we've really been talking about Moses. Moses, for the last few weeks, and, and we will for the next couple of weeks as well, today included. Uh, today, I want to talk about something that God gave to Moses to help him to know what to do. God uh, pulled aside Moses and explained to him that he wanted him, Moses, to build or to make parts that would become known as the tabernacle. It's a word that means tent or temporary dwelling place. Really, God wanted Moses to get together the things that would be needed to set up the tabernacle. Today I'm going to sign tabernacle. Tabernacle. I know there are many, many uh, different signs, but for today we'll, we'll use that because it was like the church. It was like the meeting play, place with God. And so today we'll just do this for tabernacle. I don't want to have to spell every time. But remember, it's the picture that you see here. It was really a big tent. It was a place where Israel would come to worship God. The priests of the Old Testament would do different things in this tabernacle to help them to remember they were following God. And so we want to talk about uh, the tabernacle today, and we'll discuss some of the different parts of the tabernacle. Next week, we're going to talk about how we can see Jesus Christ in the tabernacle. But for today, we want to study and really focus on the tent itself and how it was made and the different things that were made. Now, I will tell you from the start, we will not do a complete study of the tabernacle. For example, we are not going to talk about uh, the uh, different skins that made up the tent, the overhanging parts. We'll not talk about the posts that went around the courtyard. Uh, there are many, 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 many details in the Old Testament book of Exodus that you can study for yourself. We don't have time enough to study all of the parts of the tabernacle. I want to focus on the things, the, we would call it like the furniture in the tabernacle, the things that were in, in place. And we'll focus on each one as we go through, but we won't do an exhaustive study today. If you want that, there's many, many things you could read, you can see, that will help you to understand it, it more. But the best place to go is, is really your, your Bible. Uh, but I just don't have time to do all. So we're, we're going to skip some, some of the parts that make up the tabernacle. But the most Im important things we're going to talk about today as far as the furniture that was placed inside the tabernacle. All right? Well, I'm excited to teach you. You say, well, this sounds like it's going to be boring to me. Oh, it's not boring at all. It's exciting because each thing that we'll talk about today draws our attention to God and the relationship that He wants with you and I. So it's an exciting study today. I hope it'll be a blessing to you. But let's pray. We're going to ask God to help us to understand everything He wants us to know from this tent, this temporary dwelling place for God here on the earth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pause right here today to ask you to help us. We need your help as we study the Word of God every time. 
every time we open the Bible, we need the Holy Spirit of God to guide us into all the truths that are here. Especially, I think, when we come to the Old Testament and some of these uh, specific things that you talked about here in the Old Testament. We need your help. We many times don't understand what it was like to live back then and to live in tents and to move and move and move and move. So we pray that you would help us to understand that time back there, but also help us to understand the truths that, that you have placed in our Bibles for us today. And I believe that each part, each piece of the furniture that is in the tabernacle is important for us to study, to understand the depth of why you used these things. Help us to see it this week and next week as well, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to begin. I want to talk first uh, the tabernacle or the tent, the temporary dwelling place Temporary uh, dwelling place of who? Uh, well, that's what I want to talk about next. God used a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into the land we call the promised land. God used these pillars, and here you can see the fire. At night, it would become fire. During the day, it was not fire, it would be a, a cloud, a, cl a pillar of cloud. Those, that pillar of fire and cloud represented the glory of God. Now understand, we cannot see God here in our sin and live. He's holy, beyond holiness. He is pure, He's righteous, and we cannot look on Him. So these things, the fire... And the cloud, they were not really God, but they represented the glory of God. And what happened was Moses and Israel, as they left Egypt and they escaped from Egypt and Pharaoh there, they began to run. Where were they going? Really? Moses did not have GPS. He did not have a map. What was leading Moses? It was the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. If, if they saw that it moved, they would move too. But God wanted a place, a physical place, where the Jews could come and offer sacrifice, where they could think about their prayers, where they, where they could understand that God is the light that leads them, that God provides for every need they have. They needed a place like that. By the way, our churches today should copy those things, not the furniture. I'm not talking about that, but the attitude. When we come to church, we need to come recognizing we want to meet with God when we go. Uh, we want to pray to God. Uh, we want to remember that God provides every need we have. We want to offer, offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God in our churches today. We want the same kinds of things without all of the fancy uh, furniture and things. All right. So Moses and the Israelite people, they were following this pillar of fire and clouds. I'll explain a little bit more as we go forward. But God sat with Moses and he described to Moses the different pieces of furniture that would be inside this uh, tabernacle. So I want to begin, if we could, I want to explain the different things. And we're going to begin from outside the tabernacle and work our way in. And you'll see here this picture. It's an artist's picture. Um, and it, it helps us to understand how God described the tabernacle to Moses. The first place that you would go in would be here on this side of the tabernacle. As you went in, you saw this, this large court. It's called the outer court. What was it for? Well, the priest would go in every day. The priest would go into the tabernacle. The first thing that the priest would do, understand this would represent the place of meeting with God. 
that meant it was very, very spiritual. Very, very holy place. And you'll see as we, as we describe it even further. This was a holy place. And so the first thing that the priest would do for himself and for his people, he would offer an animal, he would kill an animal for sacrifice. But that's what would happen. The animals would be kept here in, the, in this outer court. Uh, he would prepare them, he would kill, he would, he would cut them up, he would make them ready for sacrifice. God's Word, the Bible is very, very clear about, very specific about what different parts of the animal, how they should be cut and what they should be used for and different things. But the priest would do that in this outer court area. Uh, in, in that area, you'll notice there are two things. Here and here. The first thing that he would see is called the brazen altar. If you look at it, it was seven feet wide, seven feet this way. So it was a square, a perfect square, seven feet in diameter. On the four corners of the altar, there was a horn that went up. You can see it here. In this, it was like a huge pit. There would be a grate that was over top. They would put wood underneath and burn. So when they killed the uh, bull or the goat or whatever they were sacrificing that day, they would cut up its parts and they would lay it on top of this altar and it would burn. They were not cooking it. They were burning it. It would be consumed. It showed that God required a blood sacrifice for sin. Nothing has changed since Adam and Eve until today, right now. God still requires a blood sacrifice for sins. Adam and Eve were given clothing from an animal. That animal had to be killed. And ever since, man has had to offer a blood sacrifice for his sin. Jesus Christ, praise God, Jesus Christ came and offered the last sacrifice required by God. But this altar was a place where uh, the animal would be burned. Again, they were not cooking to eat later. They were burning it because it was to be a sacrifice consumed for, for the sins of the person who brought it. So that's the first piece that you would see, this large altar. The second thing you would see as you went into the court is called the brazen laver. All of the other pieces of furniture that are inside the tabernacle have measurements. This is the only one without. And it is like a, I've heard it said that it was like a huge bird bath. If you've seen in your yard outside, you have the bowl and on a stand. And that's kind of what this looked like. Uh, it was a place where the priest would wash. Remember, before they had offered sacrifice on the brazen altar, and they would, be, they would be dirty, they would need to be clean. They would stop here at the laver, and they would clean, they would wash themselves, their hands. In some days, they would wash their hands, their feet, uh, their face, but other days they would wash all of them. On, I'll, I'll explain that day a little bit later. But this, this laver was for the purpose of making themselves clean to be able and ready to go into the tabernacle itself. Both the altar and the laver are outside the tabernacle in that outer court area. There's one other thing about the, the laver that I wanted to tell you. Inside the bowl itself, God told Moses to put inside the bowl mirrors. So when the priest would get over top of the laver to wash, he could see himself in the bowl itself. You see, God wanted him to become clean. He wanted him to have uh, clean hands. He wanted him to be ready to go into the tabernacle and to do the things inside of there. Uh, and so that explains the two pieces of furniture, the uh, 
altar and the laver that were outside the tabernacle itself. When, a, when the priest stepped inside the tabernacle, the first thing he would see on the left side, really it was, it was on the southern side of the tabernacle, he would see the golden candlestick. This is a pretty good picture. It had these arms that came out from a one central pole. Inside was pure olive oil, and it would burn. This, this candlestick was the only place where there was light inside the tabernacle. Remember, it is a tent. It doesn't have windows. It doesn't have doors. It doesn't have uh, a place where light can come in. The only light inside the tabernacle was from this candlestick. And, and the priest, every day he would go in as he turned to his left, he would make sure that the oil was full inside the lamp itself. He would make sure it had enough because it was going to burn and burn all day and all night, all day, all night. And he would make sure that the light, that there was oil to keep the light going. Next week, we're going to talk about the significance of that light. But I just want to let you know, this was the only place where there was light inside the tabernacle. So the priest would make sure that it was still lit because if it, if it went out, uh, the priest would not be able to see anything inside. It would be completely dark. And I want to tell you that you and I, we need to understand the importance of light in the world. Jesus said later in the New Testament, he said, I am the light of the world. And then he turned it to us and he said, ye are the light of the world. You and I have responsibility to keep our light going and going and going and burning and burning and burning. Why? For other people who are lost without Christ need to see in you light, hope, peace, love, joy, all those things. They're going to find, the world will find, not in the store, they're going to find them in your testimony. So it's important that we continue to light and be the light to this world. Uh, remember, light will always chase out darkness. Darkness and light cannot be in the same place together. Light will always conquer darkness you and I may feel like we are fighting in a, in a losing battle. But I want to tell you today, uh, if you allow your light to shine, your light will conquer the darkness. The next piece of furniture, if you look straight across now, we've come in the front of the tabernacle. On the left is the candlestick. On the right is, is called the table of showbread there. On that table, you would see 12 uh, cakes of bread. They represented for the Jews God's provision for them for 40 years wandering in the desert. God provided for them food every day. Do you remember the name of the food God provided for them for 40 years? Do you remember the name? Right. Manna. Manna itself, the word manna, it means what is it? Uh, you remember God began to provide for them manna every day from the time that they left Egypt until the time they arrived in the promised land. God provided and provided and provided. They didn't know what it was, but it was similar, it was similar to bread. So when they erected the tabernacle, they had a table off to this right side, and on that table they would have these 12 cakes of the bread to remind them that God had provided, provided for them for all those 40 years as they wandered through the desert. God had provided for them bread for every day so they could live. And I want to tell you today, I don't know what your need is, but I know that our God will provide every day for you and I. And he will always take care of his children. So this table was a place to remind the Jews and the priests every day, as, as God has provided in the past, 
God will provide in the future. I want to encourage you. God will provide for you in the future as well. The next thing would be directly in front of the person. As the priest would come into the tabernacle, to the left was a candlestick, to the right this, this table of showbread, and directly in the center in the back of the room was the altar of incense. It was beautiful. It smelled wonderful. The priest every day would come in and replace the incense to make sure that always inside of the tent was a beautiful smell of, uh, really it represented the prayers of God's people. Uh, when you would step into that tabernacle, remember uh, the uh, tent itself was made from animal skin. Maybe it didn't smell the best, but if that incense was there and it was filling up this room, it would smell wonderful all the time. And so the priest every day would go in and make sure that that incense was ready and it was burning. And, and really, I want you to remember, you and I, when we pray with God, many times we think, well, it's, that's a time for me to ask and ask to get, to get, to get. Not always. God loves to hear the prayer of His people telling Him that they love Him. Telling Him that they depend on Him telling Him that they thank Him for the things He's given to them. It's important for you and I to remember, our prayers are not only for us and our benefit. They are for God as well. God loves His children. He wants to hear your prayers. And that altar of incense represents your prayers and my prayers going up to God. It smelled sweet inside the tabernacle. And when you pray the right way God knows your prayers they smell sweet to him too there's one last room now before we go into the next place and the last piece of furniture inside the tabernacle I need to tell you inside the tabernacle were two rooms the first one with the golden candlestick the table of showbread and the altar of incense is called the holy place this area of the tabernacle, it would have been this part of the tabernacle, the front, the front two-thirds of the tabernacle, the front two-thirds two was the place called the holy place. The priest would go in and out, in and out. Every day he would go into that room. Every day he would make sure the oil was enough. He would make sure at the end of the week uh, he would take the bread and put in new 12... Uh, cakes of bread. The priests would eat the old bread. And then they would make sure that every day that the ins incense had enough and it was burning and smelling just right. That was a place that the normal priest would go in every day. There was one other room in the very back, back here in the room. And the only piece of furniture in there is called the Ark of the Covenant or the mercy seat. That, that piece of furniture was very precious to the Jews. It represented the place where the glory of God would hover over. The pillar of fire and the, the pillar of cloud would hang over top of this piece of furniture. Now let me explain, and, and then I'll, I'll move on to explain this furniture. The Jews knew it was time to move. Remember, they didn't know where they were going. They knew they were going to the promised land, but they didn't know how to get there. God was leading them through His glory, the presence of His glory in the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. When that pillar would move from over top of this, the Jews knew it's, it's time to move. And they would, they truly it was like if you've been camping before and it's time to go home and you take down the tent. That's what the Jews would do with the tabernacle. They would take it down, fold it up. You see here that there were staves, these poles. The Jews were not to touch this furniture. They would, they would put the poles. Now on this Ark of the Covenant, the poles, these were never removed. They stayed in it all the time. But they would pick up, the priests would pick up the corners and they would cover it, they would pick it up and they would 
they would follow that pillar of fire until it stopped. When it stopped, they would move this ark right underneath the pillar of fire and cloud. And that's how they knew where to go for 40 years. God led them where they would place this piece of furniture. Now, I want you to understand what this means. Each piece of furniture from the uh, brazen altar in the beginning to the laver, they were brass. But when you came inside and you saw the, the golden candlestick and the altar of incense and the table of showbread, they were covered with gold. But this, the last piece of furniture in the, that last room back there, the last part, this was really had a lot of gold. It was very, very valuable. It was valuable because it represented the place where the presence of the glory of God would hang over. And it, it was, it, it became, it really, it shows us the closer we, be, we become to God, the more precious the place. So if you, if you don't have time to pray, or you don't have time to read your Bible, or whatever the excuse may be, understand you are saying, and it's not God's fault. God does not move. But you are making a decision to stay away from God. But the closer you will become to God, the more precious God will become to you. I want to encourage you today to think about this picture of the tabernacle as you think about your relationship with God. Now, let me say this. The, you'll see two forms on the top. Uh, we don't know exactly what they look like, but they were supposed to represent angels. And they looked at each other, just like this picture is. Inside of the ark, inside of here, there were three things. Number one were the Ten Commandments on the stone. They were inside here. Number two, there was uh, manna was put inside of there. And number three was Aaron's rod that was budding. All three of those are inside of here. All three of those represented again to the Jew. First, God's requirement for righteous living, the Ten uh, Commandments. Second, the manna reminded them how awesome God is in providing for His people's needs. And third, they were, rem they were reminded when they saw Aaron's uh, rod that budded of the power of God over nature and everything else. So these three were inside the ark. This was the place where God's spirit, God's glory, dwelt over top of this piece of furniture. Now, the, the room that this was in was the last third of the tabernacle. And that room was called, the first room, if you remember, was called the holy place. But this second room, the, the last one-third room, that one, was called the Holy of Holies. The high priest went into this room only one day of the year, and it was called the Day of Atonement. The high priest would go in there to ask for forgiveness of the sins of all the people in Israel, himself included. The high priest would be very, very nervous on that day because if he stepped inside of that room with sin, his life would be over. He would die. You understand that God is holy. God is pure. God wants us to approach Him in holiness and purity. We need our sins forgiven just like the priest was going to ask for forgiveness for the sins of his people. Now he, the high priest, he only did it one day of the year. But you and I have opportunity to do, to do it many, many times, often, every day, every day of the year. Praise God for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ uh, provided that for us. Now in between the holy place room and the holy of holies room, there was a veil or a a curtain that hung from the top all the way to the bottom. It was six inches thick in measurement. In measurement, It was interwoven and it separated, separated the two rooms. 
because that Holy of Holies was a very, very, very sacred place. Now, just to review very quickly, this tabernacle, you'll see in this picture, I hope you can see, all around the tabernacle would be the tents of the Jews. They would set up the tab tabernacle first in the center. And then their tents would be set up around every tent, every tent facing toward the tabernacle. They wanted to remember the glory of God. They wanted to stay focused on God and His leadership. When the, when the pillar of fire moved, they didn't need the priest to tell them all the people could see it move, and they knew it was time. I want to tell you as we close today, there are great, great truths to be learned from this tabernacle. Yes, it's an old tent, but God can teach us even through an old tent. And I want to tell you, next week we're going to talk about how this and each of those pieces of furniture is a picture of Jesus Christ. We'll do that next week. I hope you'll, I hope you'll come back. I hope you'll make it uh, an emphasis in your life to come and to sit with me and to study again because it really opened my eyes the first time that I was studying and learned what I will teach you next week. Oh, it inspired my heart and my soul. I will tell you today, this tabernacle is a picture of what Jesus Christ wants to do for you and for me. Yes, it's an old picture, but it's still a good picture. So I want you to think about that. Next week we will talk about Jesus in the tabernacle. And I hope you'll come back. Let's pray as we close. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time today. Thank you for this old picture of a wonderful truth that you desire a relationship with us. I pray that you would help us to stay close to you so we can see you and hear your voice and know your thoughts and your ways. Help us to focus on you today and not on the things that are around us. We thank you for this Bible. Help us to study it more and more every day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I will see you next week.